All right, so when we see a question like this, right, where we have a dependent clause in front, right, remember a, oh, should I change my color, right? A dependent clause is something that can't stand on, on its own as a sentence, right? So we have, after attending multiple sessions with a doctor, right, we have a dependent clause, then we have this comma, and then we have something that occurs after it, right, which should be an independent clause, right, because to have a full sentence, we need at least one independent clause, right? So... <clears throat> when we have a dependent clause in front, what hap needs to happen after this comma, right, after attending multiple sessions with a doctor, what comes after this needs to be like, who attended multiple sessions with a doctor, right? Did a diagnosis attend multiple sessions with a doctor? No, a diagnosis isn't a person, so A is gone, right? C is gone for the same reason. D is gone for the same reason, right? Because, like, did no diagnosis t attend multiple sessions with a doctor? No. Who attended multiple sessions with a doctor? It would be a person, right? The patient, right? And this actually may make it a little bit longer, right? Usually we want to, we want to keep things as succinct as possible. But um, sometimes, like, actually putting in, like, an exact subject for a sentence, right? So, like, the patient, right? Um, it'll make it a little bit longer. So, who attended multiple sessions with the doctor? A patient. The patient was unable to receive a diagnosis, right? That would be answer choice B.